So your pastor said there are too many errors in the Bible, yeah? Yeah, that the, these things are not in the Bible, but they were put in there. Show me one document! Is your friend? Ulu Allahu Ahad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Did I read the right thing? What did I miss out? Allah Ah! <laughs> now you are not Muslim. But you're able to tell me. Oh ho! <laughs> the Quran Lee app, subscription cheaper than Netflix, encouraging Quran reading, modern, engaging, and fun. Download it today. So the Bible, would you agree that it, that after long after Jesus, when the Bible was was compiled, it then contains writings of Paul, Galatians, and all sorts. And then when it was compiled, it was written down. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. And let's just say I came to you and you had the Bible. For me to get it from you, I would have to copy it, yeah? Uh, because the first one was, I mean, there's a long history behind this thing. But in order to get a copy, would you agree that you'd have to copy it initially? Only, that's the only way. There yeah. So, would you also agree that if I've copied something, unless I'm an expert, I can make scribal errors, yeah? Yes, yeah. but okay. what happens is that you have to appreciate the early Christian sincerity, that they, they reveal the errors themselves. That's why sometimes you see, uh, it says underneath, this, this verse was not it. Okay, no problem. So they revealed that something was wrong. Okay, but accidental errors like parablepsis, when two sentences end in the same word and your eye skips a line. Yeah, and home your utilitard, which again is certain words in certain sentences that are the same and then you miss entire chunks out. I'll give you an example. Um, for example, John 7.53. Yeah, if you look at the manuscripts, and then if you look at the Bible that we have today, there's a discrepancy, there's an entire chunk missing. Yeah, if you look at the original Mark, the last 10 uh, verses of Mark, yeah, in the old uh, manuscripts that we have, yeah, you're going to notice that the last 10 verses are not there. My pastor, our Dr. Kandel used to say, he, he, he pointed toward too many errors himself, what you are saying. So this is something... So your pastor said there are too many errors in the Bible, yeah? Yeah, that the, these things are not in the Bibles, but they were put in there. And that's why in some Bible you find them, in other, and in others you find them, but they say, look, this is what we say. So this is something wrong. If, if this was from God, and uh, if, if a book, let me be neutral, if a book is sent from God, should it be open to change and manipulation from no. people if it's the only book that mankind has? Okay, so it's not supposed to be, but people will alter, something will be missing. For example, is the message still there? Is the last part? But how do you know the message if, if the scripture has been changed? No, uh, I'm just going to uh, just repeat what you said. You're, you're saying that this despite these changes and things that are missing, you're saying the general message is there. Yes, yes, okay, yes. okay. So when, when we're saying that lines are missing, yeah? So let's just say a word ends in a certain word like light. Then you have another sentence or another line that ends with light. The scribe will miss out that line. Yeah, and sometimes it will happen with a few lines. Yeah, so these, are, these aren't words that we're talking about. These, these, these are lines. And then also one thing with Greek was there wasn't punctuation yeah and there wasn't space so when you put certain words together yeah there's there's different interpretations that you can take based upon who's copying down that scripture and what what is in their heart also yeah because what you're doing and this is what I said initially that Christianity is a very book based religion yeah that initially things had to be written down and copied down to such a degree that there is a codex it's called the um, the codex it's in in the vatican yeah bart ehrman talks about it where the scribe uh this was hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 where there is that there is a word that's been completely changed then the scribe changes it back then he has to change it back again and he puts a message saying don't change the words of god 
you, where you said it's a, it's a word but the thing is Alan it now depends it may start off with a word but then it goes to sentences and just like I said with John it's not a sentence it's an entire passage and if you look at that passage it's John 753 did you memorize some Quran do you remember a little bit of it T tell me if there's a mistake I won't be able to come here anymore. Did I read the right thing? What did I miss out? Ah! <laughs> now you are not Muslim. But you're able to tell me. Oh, oh. So like that, think about it. Now you're somebody that doesn't even claim to be a Muslim. Now at the time of the Prophet, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where the, the Prophet was saying, the best of the generations is my generation, the best. So you are talking about the best. Now here we have a people that were the best, very meticulous, and very careful. They would memorize, they would understand, and they would be very cautious. Yeah, so then, at the time of the Prophet, the whole Quran was written down. All of it was written down. Thereafter, but then why do they say that it was Uthman who compared? Them? Yes, let, let, let me explain. So you have Suhuf, you have Mus'af. Yeah, Suhuf and Mus'af are different. So at the time of the Prophet, they were all written down on, on different things. So at the time of Abu Bakr, it was all compiled and given to the wife of the Prophet. Yeah? Thereafter, at the time of Uthman, he then uh, ordered the scribes to write it down and compile a Mus'haf. But bear in mind what makes Islam unique is the fact that the Muslims have memorized it. So just like I've just proven, even as a non-Muslim... Well, the Bible is too big to memorize. Uh, but the thing is, I can promise you this, even, even if the Quran was bigger, it would still be memorized. Why? Because of the dedication. And the thing is, look, if you have a religion that is there to guide people, yeah, you will not find anything and whether it's Judaism, whether it's Christianity that is as comprehensive, as preserved as the Islamic tradition. So with the Quran, I've given you proof that you that it was a verbal tradition. Then on top of that, I will but also I will I will give you evidence. We have manuscripts dating to the time of compilation. That is not, we do not have that for the Old Testament. We do not have that for the New Testament. This is not something. Show me one document. This is your friend. One document. One document. Your friend is here, you know. You see us speaking very nicely. I see when he was coming there, he looked at me. And then look, he's now standing behind us. So if you have a young person and said, can you prove to me using manuscripts and carbon dating that we have uh, manuscripts, we have texts of the Bible that can be traced back to the original place. No Christian, no Jew will say, yes, I take that challenge. But you ask a Muslim, they will say, we accept that challenge and we'll prove it to you. Uh, I gotta go. Oh, you have to go? I have to go because I work at BBC. Oh, wow. And I'm on court. Okay, okay. Brilliant, brilliant. Really nice speaking to you.